Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello, everybody. Here we are again with uh, Manny Pacheco, one of our favorite, favorite guests. Uh, and uh, to my partner, John Coleman, I haven't seen you in a while. How are you doing? <laughs> good. Manny, you're looking good. How are you? Well, always be. I'm always looking good when I'm feeling like I'm about to appear on Celebrating Act 2. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> well said. We love that. Well done. Love that. Hey, uh, Manny, there's, uh, you know, film fans, people who are true aficionados of the art form. Thank you very much. Um, it, it seems to be there's a constant debate about what the greatest film ever made was. And, of course, just I don't know why, but I've always heard it was Citizen Kane. But there's there's got to be others that are up there in contention for greatest film ever made. What, well, what, are, be, the, what are the top, top candidates? Well, I want to mention that, and I will. But let me just begin by saying that there are certain film institutes out of Britain, the AFI out of Hollywood, uh, that's the American Film Institute, and they uh, they come out with their, if not annual, maybe decade uh, retrospective of what they think the best films are. And generally speaking, Citizen Kane usually ends up on top. But there is a, a new breed of historians uh, from Hollywood and from Britain who are wanting to change that, rewrite uh, the uh, the way of thinking. And they want to put in that conversation Alfred Hitchcock's Vertigo. Mm -hmm. Now, to answer, before I get into the whole Citizen Kane versus Vertigo debate, you had asked the question of what are some of the others that should be in the conversation. Um, there are many who feel that It's a Wonderful Life tells the perfect story. And so they've created uh, uh, social media sites to that end. Uh, there are individuals who will contend that G The Godfather and The Godfather 2, uh, probably the best one-two punch and maybe the greatest films ever put uh, on celluloid. And then there are folks like myself who say that just awesome storytelling, really great acting, able direction, and uh, multi-genre uh, approach is what made Casablanca the greatest film. But that said, there are those folks who want to uh, say that Citizen Kane is now number two and that Vertigo is the new champion. You, you know, how, how you know, I'll, I'll wait just a minute. To me, the greatest uh, prize fighter is Muhammad Ali. Yet right. you can look back and take a look at other prize fighters in, in their world, in their time, that were the greatest of their time. And perhaps because of a lot of other things were greater because they had nobody uh, to to lead them. In other words, they were an original, like uh, what was the original film with the the, uh, the early film with the, the, the moon? Uh, I mean, it was really cheesy, but in a lot of ways, that was a great film. Or, or yeah. why doesn't something like The Wizard of Oz, which was a brilliant film, great storytelling, uh, there was a lot of backstory and innuendo behind that, but also the, the whole new technology. So uh, now, now I turn it back to you. So it's the greatest film, really? What, which one, which of the two potential greatest films uh, do you think is greater than the other? Well, I'll give you my analysis, but I think John wanted to say something really quick, and I didn't want to. I, I was just going to say, what? I mean, I remember Vertigo, and it was a great film, I don't what may what would make people think it's the greatest film? Well, they just think that at the time the, the the 50s were the golden decade for Alfred Hitchcock and he was making a slew of just memorable uh films of his genre which of course is mystery. Uh and, and it's it began with Strangers on the Train and it, and then it moved on to others like Rear Window and it concluded the decade with North by Northwest. But they felt that Vertigo is where he actually reached his peak and he had his perfect actor in James Stewart and then the perfect icy blonde in Kim Novak. Now, I'm of the belief that Vertigo wasn't even Alfred Hitchcock's best film, much less the best film ever made. Well, what, what Psycho? Well, Psycho, not a film? Well, you would think that Psycho would be in the conversation. I mean, it it changed it changed filmmaking forever. I, I don't know how Psycho is not the one that they're talking about rather than Vertigo. I mean, I agree with you. Now, Psycho happens not to be my favorite 
Alfred Hitchcock film, but at least I, at least I understand the case for Psycho. I don't understand the case for Vertigo. Um, if it were me, I happen to think the North by Northwest is his best film, mm -hmm. but it, it, to me, it's it's just the perfect combination of 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 grabbing the attention of the audience and still telling a great story. And I and I happen to think Cary Grant was even a better muse for for uh, for Alfred Hitchcock than uh, than James Stewart, although James Stewart was fabulous. Okay, I'm gonna so, I'm gonna help get I'm gonna help get this train back on the track. Okay, so why don't we take <laughs> of of the, all the best films that there could be. There are there are two that are sort of like a, a generally accepted, uh, at least of, of this day, the best films of all time. Uh, why don't you give us your analysis between those two best films? Well, I've already given my analysis for Vertigo, so let me concentrate here now on Citizen Kane. You got to understand that Orson Welles was twenty, what, twenty six, twenty seven when he made this film. And with the help of Herman Mankiewicz, he was able to uh, have a, a great script. He directed the film, great cinematography, uh, and he acted in the film. That said, he had a real enemy in, in, uh, in uh, 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 well, I want to say Charles Foster Kane, but actually the individual Hurst. who, yeah, William Randolph Hearst, who actually it's based on. And, and, and the outcry of just anger from the Hollywood community that he would portray even subtly or maybe more directly than subtle, uh, Marion Davies uh, as Susan Alexander. And so the film had a lot of detractors at the time, but over time, folks regard the filmmaking itself as just absolutely a, just a marvelous exercise in what is possible uh, when you have great direction and great cinematography. And, and I would say the first half of the film is probably the best filmmaking in history. I don't think anybody can touch it. I think with the introduction of Susan Alexander as a kind of a model for Marion Davies, I think that's where the film falls apart. And I think the film might be a little bit too long because of that. But the whole concept of trying to figure out what Rosebud was is really intriguing and using that as the catalyst to tell the story. And like I said, that first half of the film is just magnificent. But I think it's an uneven film. I, I, I think it ends in a way where you feel unsatisfied. And so as much as I love the film, and as much as I think it's one of the great films of all time, I, I, I just don't think that um, it's the best film ever made. And that's where my, my whole argument for Casablanca then comes in. I think well, that... Yeah, Casablanca has it all. So. Uh, you know what? I, I would tend to agree with you, but I think what holds Casablanca back from most people's opinion is that it was originally a B movie. Mm -hmm. it, wasn't, it wasn't intended to be great art. It, um, was, it was approached as a B movie. You're right about that. Yeah. So, so nevertheless, forget what its intentions were. Forget the budget. Forget all that stuff. It really is a great movie. I, I think. I, mean, I think the on reason. Many levels. I think the reason it's not this best movie is that even for cheesy special effects, when you <laughs> you talk about the cheesiest of cheesy special effects, uh, with the plane taking off at the end, <laughs> uh, before they go walking off with their arm and arm, I think. I think, quite frankly, I think African Queen was a much better film. Uh, <laughs> well, see, here's the for... see, that's the debate you know he just you, you, you just made a, an argument for this debate that's going on art because yeah there are some people that say the treasure of sierra madre to have and have not the maltese falcon and the african queen and you know you have an argument to be made because that was the one film where bogart won an oscar the african queen but his first nomination came from casablanca and I just think that the story, like you said, if not a B film, it was at least a film that wasn't considered important by Paul Heinrich or Ingrid Bergman or maybe even Bogart. But it was surely considered important by those folks who had just emigrated from Europe. They, they really felt the story. If you're S.Z. Sakal or Conrad Veidt or Peter Lorre, you're saying, wow, we're telling a very important story here because this is going to set the table with America's uh, joining in the fight against uh, against Axis Nazis. So, uh, you know, and, and remember, here's a story without an ending. I mean, they're walking off into an uncertain uh, sunset because in 1943, when the film was released, or at least, uh, yeah, when it was released, uh, 
there was no telling of whether or not we were going to beat, you know, Hitler or even even Tojo in Japan. So it's it's a great piece of propaganda and it and it's and it's well done. It's well written, uh, considering they were writing it on the fly. And uh, it was perfectly cast. I mean, consider that some of the options were that instead of it being Humphrey Bogart and and Ingrid Bergman, it was going to be uh, uh, Dennis Morgan and Ann Sheridan. Really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't I don't think Casablanca would be remembered and we wouldn't be talking about it if it was starring Dennis Morgan and Ann Sheridan. I mean, as, as much as I like the actors. They ain't Bogey and Bacall. I mean, Bogey and, and Bergman. They they just ain't. They're not even Bogey and Bacall, much less Bogey and Bergman. So I mean, wow. I think uh, yeah. I think it's one thing that's uh, very clear that um, uh, a lot of best film is context and who's judging and why. Because I mean, you can't even begin to have this discussion in my mind, even though they weren't perhaps the most. Uh, uh, complete films in a lot of ways, but Roger Corman has a stable of films, okay, uh, that were unique, that um, uh, were for its time, really uh, uh, Jaws with um, Spielberg. I mean, why was that a great film? What was the biggest box office uh, poll in relative money terms? Uh, well, yeah, a lot of the Spielberg stuff. I'm not sure I want to even well, entertain the idea of Roger Corman with, with, with the best films ever made. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. but I will tell you this much. Okay, here's something I will tell you. We're gonna if, wait, wait, we're gonna need a bigger boat. Yeah, <laughs> here's what I will tell you. If and this is this is not this is not scientific. If you were to interview the historians that think that Vertigo is the best film, many of them, if not all or, or most will say the second best film was The Godfather. And many of the folks that you interview that say that uh, Citizen Kane was the best film, if, they are, if they're forced to choose a second choice, many of, or most will say The Godfather. So one thing's for sure is that if Godfather is not in conversation with uh, Citizen Kane and Vertigo, it seems to be everybody's second choice. And that's uh, that's something to consider. Maybe it is the best film if everybody agrees that it's just right there. So yeah. that's something. And why and why not? The Godfather was about as good as it gets when it comes to to, to filmmaking as we transition into the the modern era. I mean, in many ways, it tells one of the great uh, f fictional stories of a real crime family. You know, so. Well, I, want, I would like to say that uh, I think there are probably two things we can agree on. There are a lot of candidates for best film, and that's to our uh, uh, everlasting enjoyment that we can keep watching them. Quite frankly, those are the ones that you can watch over and over and over again and find interesting new tidbits on it. But I know what there is the best that is undeniably the best in this category, and that's the P-51 Mustang. It is the best <laughs> plane, think about stealth or anything else, it was the best plane of all time because of what it was able to do and accomplish. And it's a fine looking airplane. Well, you got to do something about art, John. I mean, he just- I know. Talk about getting off track. I'm, well, I'm trying, I'm, Let me put it this way. Let me put it this way. I think this debate will be going on for many, many years. And it's a fun debate to have. If you like films, it's a great, it's a great uh, amount of fun. But we- are going to continue it another time. Because yes. once you start getting into P-51s, mm. I think it's well, the end of the You have to go back to Howard Hughes. Let me just, con let me conclude by saying that the, the debate will go on and I have I suspect that they're gonna have a lot of opinions on social media about this conversation we had on Celebrating Act Two. So that's my my opinion, my feeling. But I, and I think I, I, you're I, gonna see lots of chatter. I think the thing that we actually all can agree on is that as far as Hollywood historians go, Manny Pacheco is the best of all time. I, I think you'd get an argument from Leonard Malton and Robert Osborne yeah. and, and, and <laughs> those, those, <laughs> those Mary Mallory and others. Those guys, <laughs> those guys <laughs> couldn't clerk for you. No, no, no! Don't even go there. These are my <laughs> friends. Don't, don't even say it, Art. Okay. You're going to get me in a lot of trouble. And I love these guys, and I turn to them many times. I, I would also like to mention my good friend Carrie Bible over at uh, Hollywood Forever Cemetery. These are real experts in the genre. So please. Okay. <laughs>
well, if experts or not, I love reading your blogs well, on your you. website. So give us your website. Uh, ForgottenHollywood.com. I invite folks to uh, look at uh, what's going on uh, in today's Hollywood and, of course, in a long, not so long, Forgotten Hollywood. So Great. Uh, we, uh, Manny, the important thing is that we can all get together again and debate this and other topics. So appreciate it. In, in the meantime, we'll be reading your blog. Yes, and uh, let's not bring up Roger Corman again. Thank you, Art. <laughs> For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends, Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.